Welcome back to Play the Game HQ. I'm Daniel, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Robot Quest Arena, the deck building bot battling game from Wise Wizard Games, who helped sponsor this video. During the game, you'll be using cards to pilot your robot in battle, adding powerful new cards from the shop, and attacking your opponent's robots to score points. And the game ends when a robot needs to respawn, but there are no blue cubes left in the supply, and the player with the most victory points at the end of the game wins. And the main way that you get victory points in this game is by attacking your opponents and gaining their health cubes as victory points next to your player board. To set up the game, put the advanced battery, heavy hammer, and rivet gun supply cards in the spaces on the bottom of the board, then shuffle the remaining shop decks with numbers in the top right corner and put them face down at the top of the board and fill the six shop card spaces from that deck. If a card does not have a number in the top right corner, that's a starting card and it does not get shuffled into the shop deck. Now, if it's your first game, you're gonna to wanna to set up the board the way that we have it here. And you can also find this layout in the rule book. There's more tiles that can be added to the board. Some are good, some are bad, and some just get in your way. And once you have a handle on the rules, you can mix up the layout of the board for a more challenging game. Once you have the board set up, each player is gonna choose a player board and take their matching miniature. And each character has special abilities, so be sure to check those when you're choosing your character. The player who most recently built something will be the first player and gets to choose first and then go clockwise around the table. Put your health board in front of you and fill your health bar starting with one blue cube on the first wrench symbol, then a red cube on each of the remaining symbols. Whenever you're filling your health, whether it's the beginning of the game or you're respawning, always make sure you start with one blue cube and then fill the rest up with red cubes. Each player is going to start the game with a personal deck of eight batteries, one hammer, and one jump jet. Now during the game, your deck is going to be your deck. You'll be adding cards from the shop to your deck, but you're going to shuffle through and add to your deck throughout the entire game. The decks are not shared between players. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna shuffle your deck and draw five cards. During the game, you'll be playing cards from your hand onto the table and then discarding those cards and any cards remaining in your hand into your face-up discard pile at the end of your turn. So in your play area to the left of your player board, you need a space for your active play area, your draw pile, and your discard pile next to that. And then to the right of your player board is where you'll keep your victory points. The red and blue cubes have two purposes during the game. They're gonna track your health and they're gonna track your victory points. When you damage another robot, you'll take what other health cubes you removed and add them to your victory point pile next to your board. Each player is gonna start the game with a certain number of victory points based on their turn order. First player gets zero, second player gets one, third player gets two, and so on. Put the remaining cubes and gems in the reserve space at the bottom of the player board. You're always gonna use all of the red cubes and gems, but the number of blue cubes you use depends on your player count as those are gonna determine when the game ends. You'll use six, seven, or eight blue cubes for a two, three, or four player game respectively. Gems are worth five cubes and you can exchange those out whenever you need to. And finally, in turn order, take turns placing your robot on any of the unoccupied spawn tiles in the corner of the board. And now you're ready to get started. Player's gonna take turns beginning with the starting player and going clockwise around the table. At the beginning of your turn, you're gonna check for any start of turn effects and apply them if you have them. If you're on any of the center nine spaces of the board, you're gonna gain one victory point at the beginning of your turn and put it next to your board, unless there's a tile on that space like the tactile right here. If you've been knocked out in the previous round, you respawn your robot on any unoccupied spawn tile and refill your health, but this happens after the start of turn phase, so if you're respawning, you do not get to activate any start of turn effects. Next is the main phase where you're going to play cards, use abilities, buy more cards from the shop, move around the arena, and attack other robots. Cards are free to play, you only pay a cost when you're buying new cards, and you can do as many actions as you want on your turn as long as you have the cards to do them, and you can do your actions in any order you choose. After you've exhausted all of your actions, perform any end of turn effects, then move any cards from your active play area to your discard pile, and then discard any cards you might still have in your hand and draw five new cards. Unspent cards and unused actions do not carry over to your next turn, so be sure to do as much as you can with your cards on your turn. If you ever need to draw cards but your draw pile is empty, just shuffle your discard pile, place it face down, and start drawing from that new draw pile. There's three types of cards, batteries, functions, and attacks. Each card shows its name, the cost to purchase in the top right corner, and its effects. Battery cards give you energy that you can spend to buy more cards, move, and use certain abilities. Energy is the currency of the game. Some other cards also provide you energy to spend, and energy from all of the cards in your hand can be pooled together. You don't have to spend your energy from cards individually. Anytime you see a battery icon on a card anywhere other than the top right corner, that represents energy that can be spent on your turn. 
Function cards provide various effects like drawing more cards, gaining victory points, and moving. And if a card gives you movement or energy, it doesn't have to be spent right away when you play the card, but it does have to be used on that turn or you're gonna lose the effects of that card. And finally, there's attack cards, which lets you attack the other bots in the arena. There's two types of attack. There's melee attacks shown by the boxing glove and ranged attacks that have an arrow icon. Melee attacks can target any robot in any space next to you, but not diagonally and ranged attacks can target any enemy within the range shown on the card, which is basically a ring around your robot and does include diagonal attacks. So from here, with a melee attack, I could only attack Crate, but I couldn't attack Pug because Pug is diagonal. But with a ranged attack of one, I could attack Pug, a range of two, I could attack Petrie, and a range of three could attack Crate. If an attack card has any special instructions, resolve those first and then reduce your target's health by the amount shown. So the pneumatic piston says to draw two cards, then discard two cards. So I would do that first and then reduce crate's health by one as shown by the damage icon right here. When you damage another robot, take the health cubes that they use and add them to your victory point pile. So when I damage crate for one with the pneumatic piston, I'll take one cube from crate's board and add it to my victory point pile. If you want to buy a card from the shop, just spend the energy cost shown in the top right corner of the card and put that card directly into your discard pile, not into your deck. So I have three energy that I can spend with these cards right here. So I could buy the advanced AI card and move it straight into my discard pile. Whenever there's an empty space in the shop, immediately replace it with the top card from the shop deck. If an ability ever lets you scrap a card, like starting on the junkyard tile, put the card face up in the scrap heap pile. That card is permanently removed from your deck. And if the shop deck ever runs out, shuffle the scrap heap to form a new shop deck. Now, typically when you scrap cards, it's always gonna be from your hand. It's not gonna be cards you've already played or used the ability that turn. Unless otherwise stated, you have to scrap the card before you use it that turn. During your turn, you can spend energy to move around the board. One energy lets you move one space up, down, left, or right, but you cannot move diagonally unless a card ability specifically allows you to do so. So with my three energy here, I can move up to three spaces. And again, that is left, right, up, and down, not diagonally. And you can't move over obstacles that block movement like walls or other robots. You can move as many times as you can afford with your available energy on your turn and any unused energy is lost at the end of your turn. Now remember, you spend energy to move or to buy cards or a mixture of both. If you use energy to move, you can't use that same energy to buy cards on the same turn. If you use a card that lets you move over obstacles, it still costs one energy per space to move and you can't stop on top of obstacles that block movement. So I couldn't move and stop on top of this wall or on top of another robot. You can also push robots that are next to you by spending two energy. And pushing robots is a great way to move them where you want them and sometimes even damage them. First, when you move a robot, you're gonna knock back the other robot. Now you'll hear that knockback term in some other abilities, and it just means to push the robot one space away. So first, you're gonna knock back the robot. So from here, I could move crate by spending two energies, and first I'm going to knock him back, and then you're gonna move into the space that that robot was in. Now, if an ability lets you specifically knock back another robot, you'll only move the other robot, you won't move into their space. If you knock a robot into an obstacle that blocks movement, like a wall, the outer edge of the arena, or another robot, they're gonna take one damage and nobody moves. And if you knock a robot into another robot, they both take damage and nobody moves. So in this scenario, I could spend two energy to push crate into this wall, which would cause one damage and give me one victory point. And in these positions right here, I could spend two energy to push crate into pug. Nobody would move, but I would cause one damage to each and gain one victory point from each of their health boards. The only limit to that rule is that you can't push the same robot into the same obstacle more than once per turn. Now, when an effect lets you pull another robot, you're gonna pull them in a straight line onto the space next to you. So I could use the grappling clamp to pull any robot within a range of four spaces from my robot to the space next to me, and you pull them in a straight line. So if I use this on Petri, I'd pull Petri right to that space. When you're pulling a robot at a 45 degree angle like this, you're gonna have two valid spaces to pull that robot onto. And in that case, you get to choose. So from here, I could use the same grappling clamp to pull Petrie to me. And I could place Petrie either there or there. And I'm probably gonna do that because that's gonna cause damage, which I'll get to collect as victory points. When you're performing ranged attacks, the target must be within line of sight. And line of sight can be blocked by obstacles and other robots. 
To check the line of sight, you're gonna draw an imaginary line from the center of your square to the center of the square that your target is on. And if that line passes through a space with an obstacle, not just touching the corner, but actually passing through it, then line of sight is blocked. But if no obstacles are in the way, then the target is within line of sight and you are free to target that robot. So going back to the action we just did, I have a clear line of sight to Petrie because it goes straight through all of these squares and there's no obstacles in the way. But if I were on this square, I would not have line of sight because that imaginary line would cross through that wall. During the game, your health is gonna be tracked with cubes on the board and whenever you take damage, you're gonna remove a cube from your board and give it to the player who damaged you as a victory point. And always remove your red cubes first and the blue cube last. If you or another friendly robot takes damage on your turn, you're gonna lose victory points in addition to the health that you lose. You're gonna lose one victory point for losing a red cube and two for losing a blue cube. But again, that's only when you take damage on your own turn. Whenever you lose health this way, put any red cubes you lose back into the supply, but any blue cubes you use, again, on your turn, back into the box. They never go back into the supply because those cubes are what track the end of the game. When an effect repairs you, like starting your turn on the repair pad, you're gonna add red cubes from the reserve onto your player board, but you can never exceed your full health. And when an effect gives you victory points, which starting on the repair pad also does, add those victory points from the supply to your victory point pile next to your player board. If your last health cube is ever removed, you're gonna be temporarily removed from the board and you'll respawn during the respawn phase at the beginning of your next turn, at which point you will refill all of your health, starting with one blue cube, and then spawn on any open respawn square on the board. The end of the game is triggered when a robot would need to respawn, but there's no blue cubes left in the supply. And when that happens, the game ends immediately and players count their victory points to see who won. Each red cube is worth one point, each blue cube is worth two points, and each gem is worth five points. Only cubes in your victory point pile count for points. You don't count up the remaining cubes on your health board. Once the points are tallied, the player with the most victory points wins. And if it's a tie, the player with the most health cubes on their board wins. And if it's still a tie, you just have to share the victory. There's a couple of variations for two players and for team games. When you're playing with two players, each player controls two robots, but still only has a five card hand. And you're gonna split your energy and movement between those two robots. But when you play a card for an effect, you have to choose which robot is using that card and its effect. And when you play on teams, all of the rules are the same. Just make sure that the first player from team one takes their turn, then the first player from team two, then the second player from team one, and so on. And remember, if your teammate loses health on your turn, you lose that many victory points. And at the end of the game, teammates combine their points to see who the winning team is. Now let's talk about the different tiles on the map. Walls just block line of sight and movement, and smoke blocks line of sight, but does not block movement. You can move over a square with smoke on it. If you start your turn on the junkyard, you may scrap a card from your hand, but you're not required to. And if you start your turn on the remote terminal, draw, then discard a card. If you start your turn on the repair pad, you gain one victory point and you repair your robot one health. And if you start on the solar farm, gain one energy to spend that turn. You'll take two damage whenever you enter the tax and the pothole causes one damage whenever you move onto it and it costs one extra movement to move your robot off of it. Whenever you enter the trash compactor, scrap the top card of the shop deck and if the cost of that card is six or more, you're immediately knocked out and you lose all of your health. And that's Robot Quest Arena. If you have any questions, be sure to leave me a comment and I will answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.